Hello everyone, I am Tassa and welcome to the Gems of War Campaign 9, uh, or sorry, Campaign 5, Week 9, Day 6. So today, uh, we finished up pretty much every objective we need to get done. Actually, I think we might need to do a little bit of the world event, or not the world event, uh, that we finished. I mean, a little bit of the, um, the invasion event that we had uh, going on yesterday. As I think we still have a little way. Oh, no. The guild already carried it. Never mind. <laughs> Two people going for a leaderboard carried it. But uh, since all of our objectives are officially done, as well as we finally found, spoilers, last night, uh, we finally found the uh, last troop. Uh, there is nothing under unowned anymore. Uh, if we go to the uh, full list. Also, they did a patch the other day where they fixed the uh, skull glitch. They also fixed the banner glitch thing. So now we have everything. Well, except for team slots, but that's locked behind money. But, um, and it's only more team slots. Obviously, it's not something unique. But uh, we have every troop. We have every weapon. We have every pet. And we have every banner. Every possible thing that can be gotten. Uh, which means we finally have all the troops in the game before 1,000 troops come into the game on Friday. Or, you know, not literally 1,000 on Friday, but 1,000 total, obviously. <laughs> can you imagine 1,000 troops being added in one day? But, um... This Friday, we will officially be hitting the uh, 1,000 mark. Actually, technically a bit above the 1,000 mark, since we're getting four at once. But, um, yeah, that'll be a pretty nice milestone for the game. And, of course, we still have two more days of Community Week, which means tomorrow uh, we should have something hopefully interesting for free. Uh, this one's pretty bad. Don't bother getting that. But uh, hopefully the free one will uh, end up being good in seven hours from now. We'll know for sure. And on calendar, we just get uh, some more gems. We got the second uh, instance of the pet. But, uh, still a little bit of gems to go with everything else, if nothing else. And, of course, uh, be interesting to see what we get on, not the campaign, uh, but be interesting to see what we get on, um, Adventure Board. Uh, we already know what we're getting today, obviously, a deed with six color scrolls. However, um, they've done this six times this week. However, uh, we don't know where we're gonna get on the seventh day, so we'll have to wait and see. Might be something special. It's definitely gonna be some kind of loot, that's for sure, if nothing else. But, anyways, uh, today's just gonna be a kind of chill stream. Also just doing some token grinding since uh, we haven't really had the opportunity to do so yet this week since we were opening vault keys pretty much every single free time we had <laughs> in order to try to get the gnomes, of which we finally have all of them, luckily. Um, actually, I didn't even show them all together, but uh, of course if we go under the vault, I believe it's under T's because it's the vault, not a vault. Uh, yeah, the vault, literally the vault. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we got them all. Uh, finally got Bon, uh, not Boz, no, a Bone, oh my gosh, I cannot speak. Boz, no, those, that's a weird word. word. Uh, Boz Bone Beater. Gosh, try saying that five times quick. Boz Bone Beater, Boz Bone Beater, Boz Bone Beater, Boz Bone Beater. Actually, oh, that's not too hard. Um, it's harder the first time. <laughs> it's harder to say once than it is to say multiple times in a row. But, um, yeah, there's that. There's the C C Cindy Savage Lips. There's the Freddy uh, Frittler. And there's the, uh... A uh, hoagie uh, humbucker, and that is all of them. Anyways, so uh, let's go open our invasion stuff since we are done with it. Though if you aren't done with it, um, or if you haven't done it so already, uh, make sure to spend 210 gems to get the weapon. Pretty good weapon. Explodes a bunch of reds, grants a random stats effect to all uh, Naga allies. Uh, this is very situational as to when you would use it. However, it has really good synergy with Merilith. Um, so definitely worth considering with that. Uh, Merilith plus this is a good double mana accumulating option. Uh, gains additional effects onto the Merilith as well. And it has no mana conflict with each other. So you can use both Merilith and this and uh, mana accumulate. And neither of them will be blocking each other. So it's up working out pretty nice. And uh, definitely make sure to get it if you haven't already. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's go claim these orbs. Where are our shiny orbs? It feels uh, almost bad opening this is such a small amount just because we've had so many Volkies. But hey, if they drop blues and other good stuff, still good. Ah, uh, small pur uh, purple. That's it. Not the same as opening 100 Volkies. <laughs> Actually, our jump stack's starting to get pretty big. But anyways, uh, hello everyone! Hope all of you have been having a wonderful weekend so far. Hello Bill! Hello Interception! Hello Imperial! Hello Hong! Hello uh, Sushi Ninja! Uh, hello NASA! Hello Cookie! Hello uh, Isabel! And hello everyone else! Welcome, welcome. Um, sudden crashes on iPhone still hasn't been fixed. Oh no! Hopefully it'll get that fixed soon. Uh, let's see. How do we have, uh, max pets? Uh, the bigger question is how do we have above max pets? <laughs> but, um, we have max pets just by getting all the pets when they initially came out. How we have above max pets, I believe, is because of the Android pet, I think. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's because of the Android pet. Um, it's either that or because it doesn't count. It either isn't counting the Android pet or isn't counting the um, the uh, Renown pet. I'm pretty sure it's the Android one, though I'm not 100% certain on that. 
because uh, since we're on the Steam version right now, it doesn't count the Android one. And if you were on the Android one, it wouldn't count the Steam one. But uh, there's two pets that are actually um, obtainable to get, or, you know, one on each. But um, it's technically possible to get it the other way around. Uh, because, you know, you can link your account to the other one. So even if you're on Steam, you can still have the uh, Android pet. And even if you're on Android, you can still have the Steam pet. Uh, I have no clue where either of them are by searching through quickly. <laughs> oh, there's the Android one. But uh, we got the Android. The Isabots. Also, thank you for donating to Isabots, uh, Isabel. <laughs> Named after Isabel. Actually, I think she did that as a birthday present last year. But uh, we were able to get the Isabots. Or the uh, little Android bot thingy. And the other one is the Steam pet, which is somewhere in all this mess. There it is. And that's the one to Steam. They're both the two money pets. Uh, though the Steam pet has gone on sale before, so far the Android pet has never gone on sale. It has always been $50. Uh, the Steam pet has been as cheap as... Uh, they gave it away for free at one point as well for something. Some kind of promotional thing. And it's been as cheap as $5 on Steam. Though I think these days it goes on sale for like 25 bucks when Steam has a Steam sale. Uh, question. Is Iron uh, Wave Weapon uh, worth crafting? Uh, I believe no, because I cannot recall what that weapon is. Uh, oh, it's one of the double converters. I can tell just by looking at the icon. Um, it's okay. I don't really feel like it gets used. Uh, one big issue with this weapon is you have to use it with uh, Tidecaller Hero Class. And Tidecaller Hero Class is a blue hero class, and this is a red-yellow weapon. So already it's starting with a bit of a conflict there. Um, as far as brown blue for merfolk, it is pretty good. Uh, brown blue is actually really useful colors to create for most merfolk. Uh, however, the issue with that is a lot of really good merfolk, merfolk use both brown and blue, which uh, might sound like a good thing. However, <laughs> as far as man accumulation is concerned, it can get kind of clunky because um, a lot of the really big damage sources that are under merfolk are brown blue. So yes, it's beneficial that it's creating it. However, you're generally not really mana generating into something that can generate more. So you can't really loop back into the weapon. Um, it's okay to get. It's not particularly meta. Um, though it it's definitely works if you want to use like a pure Merfolk team and kind of utilize it. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad weapon. It's not a must-have though. Uh, but it is under that category of weapon where it could just magically become extremely meta at any given point if a, a Merfolk comes in that just happens to make it really good. Like we could end up getting a uh, Mythic Merfolk that happens to use Brown Blue that generates back into Yellow Red. Uh, like some kind of explode or something. Um, and if that happens, then that weapon will just magically become really good. Like if a Mythic comes out and does that in several months. But uh, yeah, there's not really any way of knowing. In the current state of the game, it's pretty average like any of the other double converters. Before it becomes really meta by some kind of team competition. Anyways, let's go do some token grinding. We get ourselves some 20%. Uh, this is actually the first token grinding we've done all uh, weekend. Try to get ourselves some medals. Uh, we'll do it in uh, Gulvania. Uh, this place still has a zero immune to burns. Uh, that will change, I believe, in the next month or two, unfortunately. However, at this current moment in time, it still has zero. So let's utilize that while we can. Even once it does get immune uh, to burn or two, it's not really going to matter too much. You just have to pay a lot more attention to where you target to Goth and make sure you always target the things that, of course, have immune. So that uh, they just instantly die to the uh, it's the kill of Zugoth. Uh, but as of currently, uh, it is the only kingdom in the entire game that does not have a single immune to burning troop. Which is really good, since the whole premise of this team, of course, is to do triple damage burning uh, off the uh, Zugoth Skull, or uh, more so into Slayer Hero class, uh, due to the Zugoth Skull. But yeah, if anyone has any questions and you want me to go over, do let me know. Otherwise, uh, we're kind of just be chilling, farming a bit, and uh, going from there. And then tomorrow night, uh, we'll have all the weekly spoilers, which um, I don't think there's as much going on next week. Also, that's the last Monday video we'll be able to. Actually, no, I'll be able to the following week. It's the Monday after that Monday we won't be able to. Or at least uh, it'll be weird to try to record it. <laughs> I still do want to try recording it while I'm away, though. That's going to be... Uh, the method of doing so will be kind of weird if it even get around to it. Hopefully it would be stable. I would assume it would be stable for phone connection. The bigger concern is managing data while I'm on vacation. Since I won't have Wi-Fi, so <laughs> anything I do internet related is entirely off my uh, data plan. Will Salty stream to preview the upcoming faction week uh, next week? I sure hope so. Also, I wonder if she even realizes that the game will be hitting 1,000. We shouldn't remind her initially to see. Oh, I'll need to catch her stream. I wonder if she'll completely forget. I'm pretty sure she doesn't even know, since most devs don't play the game. <laughs> the live version of the game. It was pretty funny. On the actual previous Q&A, like several months ago, they didn't even realize like the 1,000 troop milestone is coming up. 
because they're always playing like test versions of the game and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure almost none of them touch the live version other than when Salty uh, does uh, her stream. But I'm pretty sure not a single one of them knows. <laughs> so it'll be funny if she forgets to mention it. Because that's pretty big. <laughs> as far as milestones are concerned for the game. Hitting 1,000 troops. The game started with less than 100. And we're about to hit the four digit value next Friday. Actually, we almost hit it next Monday. I think we're getting like four new troops on Monday. If we're getting two Doom troops, we're actually getting four troops on Monday, meaning we'll have 999 troops on Monday. Assuming we get four. Two from the... Uh, there's one Legend coming in. An event you dropped, if I'm not mistaken. There's one coming just to Standard Glory. And there's some amount of boss troops possibly coming. I'm still not sure exactly what's happening with that. But it's two versions that have been in the files. So not sure if they're actually coming out or what on Earth's happening. But we'll find out. <laughs> Regardless, Friday will definitely be the 1,000 mark. Regardless of what happens on Monday. <laughs> uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's been over 1,000 bugs by now. I'm pretty sure we hit that milestone by the second tier of the game. Pretty sure we hit that ages ago. Like, that's really optimistic if you think it hasn't hit a thousand yet. <laughs> the uh, number of bugs. I wouldn't be surprised if they hit a thousand bugs per year. It's just a lot of them are really minor. Though well, some of them are not really minor, like the two-time skull glitch that happened recently. That is exceedingly not minor. Hey, an anu already. Oh, wow, that was quick. Oh, and metal out of it too. That's even quicker. I said, hello, Nightmare. Welcome. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if Salty's streaming the preview this week. I hope she is uh, on Monday. It's always nice to see them a bit early. If nothing else, it's nice to see the layout early. Because it makes getting into the faction on Friday a bit easier. Already knowing um, everything about it. Or not literally everything, but you know. You can kind of see just by the layout and everything. Kind of what it would be. I can't recall forgetting anything good. I actually haven't looked at the new uh, troops yet. I generally try to wait just because they tend to change them quite a bit before it gets released. And I hate memorizing them incorrectly. So I normally wait till they're launched just so I don't look at it prior to uh, them getting rebalanced. Otherwise, I'll sometimes uh, remember the incorrect balance on them. Because generally whatever I first see them as is what I remember them as. And that's rather problematic if <laughs> before the game even comes out it's something completely different. Uh, let's see. We'll take that over. Please don't kill it. Good. Oh, he has stealthy, doesn't he? That's unfortunate. 8 HP getting in the way. Exceedingly unfortunate. You wish you would throw more fun into the game, like how they did with the, uh, the Nanoma Palooza. They really need uh, more patches that do something uh, similar to what the Nanoma Palooza did, in the sense that we need something that we can pretty much immediately do with the patch. There's a lot of patches that they've been doing over the last two years, where the patch comes out and there's almost nothing to do with it, because there's no like um, game mode that you could do with it, no kind of like new feature necessarily that is directly tied to it immediately. Like normally it takes like uh, weeks before it really rolls around on a lot of the times. Uh, like the last previous time that that happened prior to Noma Palooza where we got a really good one was all the way back in like October of 2019, ages ago. Um, so it's been quite some time. That was like what, over a year and a half gap then? Between the last time where they did a patch where there was something really substantial that you could do the second the patch came out. Uh, they need more stuff like that where the patch comes out and there's already like something exciting to advertise the patch with like oh hey you can immediately go do this now that the patch is out because a lot of them run on event cycles that you can't immediately do or other similar things like that and very few of them actually run immediately like the tokens did or the um noma palooza did and the noma palooza of course even made more so by the fact they even changed the vault event timer 
um, because it was supposed to be different. It was supposed to be uh, the invasion we had this week was supposed to be last weekend, but they of course changed the patch, which was very beneficial. What's also beneficial is they changed the other vault weekend, which was going to be during the uh, time I'm away, but it actually got changed. So now I'm only missing, I think, Bounty Hunter, which is kind of uh, perfectly fine to miss. Obviously, uh, you still want to do your battles for it, but uh, there's nothing really to go over with Bounty Hunter. It's the same thing pretty much every time. You run the three meta troops combined with uh, whatever the uh, the uh, force troop is off of the um, bounty captain. That's basically all you do. It's a nice quick kill to Grocky team with however you want to build it. Depending on what the battles are and what the other troop is. And it's the same thing every time. This was one variable difference. Oh, why did I do that? I already had the win condition. There we go. Also, this might be the last night you see all the hair. Probably going to be shaving it off tomorrow. That or Sunday night. Definitely sometime tomorrow. But it might not be in time for tomorrow night's stream. But by Monday night, we will look completely different. Quality of life improvements or uh, someone who could uh, focus on them exclusively would be nice. Uh, this game still needs a lot of uh, rebounds and a lot of um, quality of life stuff. It would be nice that we, if we got a patch, I was literally just that at some point. So that would take away like a quarter or actually probably almost half of how they work. <laughs> that would almost take up like half their development cycle for a year though, if they were to do something like that. But I really do need a designated patch for um, quality of life and balance. Balance for this game has always been kind of weird. It's a single player game, so obviously a balance can kind of be whatever. But, um, I don't know, it's always been... <laughs> it's always been, as, as of the last few years, kind of all over the place. As far as what it ends up doing. Because as we keep getting more and more options, obviously the synergies keep getting crazier and crazier. As far as what can do what. And now that we're about to hit 1,000 as of this Friday, um, in six days from now, it just uh, it keeps getting more insane what those 1,000 troops can do with each other. Not to mention if you count weapons, theoretically that number of options is closer to like 1,300 or so, or 1,400, forget how many weapons there are. But of course, troops are a little bit more versatile since you can use as many as, of them as you want. You're not restricted only to one of them in your team. One other thing that's kind of weird with this game, too, is despite how many options there are and the increasing number of options, the increasing number of overpowered teams, the meta generally shifts pretty slowly as of recently. Like, very rarely does um, a team come around that is just, like, definitively better than what existed prior. One exception to that was uh, Iron Hawk earlier this year, where the farming team for Quick Kill just um, instantly became Iron Hawk and became substantially better than all other alternatives. Uh, how long did it take you to max all classes? Too long. <laughs> I want to say it took like two and a half to three years from when they lifted the cap. Because they didn't always used to be like levelable like that. But um, I'm pr pretty sure it was two years. I believe it was just shy of two years. It was either one year or two years. I actually can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was two years. It took to max out every hero class. It takes a while. Realistically, you don't really need them all maxed though. They do eventually for kingdom upgrades, but that's like way, way deep into the game. Like you'd have to have been playing the game already for years anyways to begin with to have stars that deep. That you would actually need to hero classes leveled that high. But yeah, it takes a really long time. Uh, with optimal methods in the current state of the game, it takes about 28 hours per hero class. It can be done a little bit quicker if you do like a really lucky PvP strategy. Where you repick spam and just try, hey, we got another Anu, and just try to hope you get lucky. But overall, it's um, it takes a while. It takes a very long while. Even at, even if it took uh, 28 hours per hero class, doing it with optimal methods, which you can do slightly quicker with some of the other methods. But uh, even if we just take that into account, doing really optimal methods the entire time, uh, that would end up coming down to um, math. What's 28 times 34? That's like 700 something, right? Somewhere around there. It's like about 700 something hours of optimally grinding um, hero classes. It's obviously a pretty substantial amount of time. Definitely adds up. 
Though you generally get quite a bit of the EXP passively over time. Obviously, you're not necessarily playing the entire uh, duration. Or not, not playing, but you know what I mean. You're not, um, you're not specifically trying to farm it the entire time. Because there's a lot of ways you just naturally passively get it. Like class events on Thursdays, so it gives a pretty small amount. As well as um, just using them on non-optimal teams. When you actually need the hero class, but you're still getting HP towards it. Because there's a lot of hero classes that are viable at 70. And 70 is halfway to 100 in this game when it comes to hero class level 1. Because they require 550 HP and um, you need 200 or 2,525, which is half the amount to get to 70. So you have all the upgrades except for one when you have it at 70 when you're halfway. Uh, the only thing that you get extra from getting it the other half is to get its very final perk. Which on many hero classes is useless anyways. Though on a few is actually pretty mandatory to use it. Like all the triple damage burning hero classes. As well as things like Titan to have its uh, immunity and stuff like that. Uh, question, how do you think... Uh, it, or how... Do you think uh, would it take? How do you think would it take to get a war coin offer? Oh, I think you mean how long would it take? Um, I would say a week, though you can get unluckier than that. It would take around one to three weeks of doing arena, or let's say one week to a month. <laughs> Somewhere from one week to one month of doing arena, to uh, every single day three times, to get a single war coin offer. I'm not sure how accurate that is because I have not bothered doing that <laughs> because I cannot be bothered. But um, yes, that's how long it would take. Though you're going to get other offers along the way, like possibly Imperials and stuff. Um, so it is theoretically worth it if you really want to optimize like as much loot as possible. However, um, yeah, it takes a while. Like doing three arena runs per day is generally going to take about 30 minutes. So if you times that by the number of... Um, if you times that by the number of days that you'd likely have to do it, uh, it is probably way more efficient just to spend money on it. <laughs> I personally haven't bought any war coins yet. I've actually gotten surprisingly pretty lucky on finding war coins off the offers, off the natural offers. So we have yet to buy a single war coin, and we are um, we have every banner uh, and 25 spears. We have every possible um, war coin bundle, all seven of them, and we have yet to spend a cent. And we have 25 spear, so we've gotten pretty lucky. Obviously, it still costs us some gems to get them, but that's pretty minuscule relative to actually having them. Their yeah, war coins were made, like, really weird. Like, there's no way to really realistically obtain them as a um, end game player. Like, newer players can get, like, more than they're ever going to need. But people who've already been playing the game kind of got locked out of it, which is kind of weird. I'm not really sure why. Well, obviously they did it because of money. <laughs> but um, it, it's just a really weird way that they set it up. Basically trying to sell banners. For money. Because that's really the only unique thing in there. Is the banner. You get another team slot, which is always convenient. But uh, the only thing that really changes gameplay is specifically the banner. Because you get the weapons for free just by leveling up. Those were added on Monday, so if you can get a level since Monday, you'll probably have the weapons already. Because I think you just need 100 green mastery to get the two uh, new ones that came out last uh, last Tuesday. When they patch it. But yeah, the way that war coins are set up, it's pretty much set up that people would have to spend money on it unless they got really lucky. Or grinded arena forever. Because there's not really any other way other than grinding arena to actually get it three times per day. And even then, it's just more chances, not even guaranteed. But yeah, I haven't seen war coins for a while. We were about one month dry on war coins. Oh, hello, Gen Key. Welcome. You're re listening while delving? Nice. And looking up uh, to see uh, the fake Bower Raven. Oh, no. <laughs> I was uh, freaking out for a second and then realized it must have been uh, Lincoln's Robin. Aww. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But yeah, uh, Lankanthropy can spawn... I mean, um, Valraven can spawn off of Lankanthropy. Due to, um, it's still counting as a beast. Even though it's from the Vault Kingdom, it is still a beast, so it does still count. Chance of it specifically doing it is pretty rare, though. Since there's, like, 50, 100 beasts? I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to put a number. How many beasts are there these days? They should probably still keep upgrading it because of Lankanthropy. 
at this point, the uh, Lincanthropy Gems will stop. So hey, Lincanthropy Gems in nine more days will no longer spawn from sky unless there's a hollow storm or how how storm, whatever it's called, how storm. But um, yes, unless there's specifically a how storm in play, which when I was messing with it earlier, it seemed like it was glitch. It wasn't doing it when I was doing random storm. But as long as there's not a how storm in play, uh, in nine more days, you will no longer see a Lincanthropy gem fall from sky. So that's going to be a nice milestone <laughs> for the game. Lincanthropy gems no longer fall from the sky. That'll be a wonderful day. Uh, what did I come here for? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to see how many beasts there are. I don't know how many are there these days. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want... Uh, I like how it just moves from A to B, but it didn't actually go anywhere because it's still B on this page. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13, 14. Wow, there's a lot more beasts than I thought. Uh, 15, 16, 17. Wow. How many beasts are there in this game? 18. 18 times 8 is... Um, I'll put it in the calculator just in case. <laughs> 18 times 8 is... Uh, 144 uh, plus 1. There's 145 beasts in the game. Interesting. That's actually pretty high when you think about it. There's just like 20-something troop types. And there's almost a thousand troops in the game. However, beasts make up 145 of the total troops in the game. Meaning there's a really high concentration of beasts. That means... Oh, we're getting a Valor even off of Lincanthropy is really rare then. That means there's currently a 1 in 45 chance a Lincanthropy will actually make it into a Valor even. Or any troop for that matter, specifically. Because there's so many beasts. I didn't even realize there's that many. It might be the highest in any category of troop type. Uh, both uh, Arachnia, uh, Arachnian Weaver, and Phoenicia have uh, yet to be in Soulforge's cycle. Uh, it both come at once, and you can only craft one. Which should you prioritize? It depends what you want to do, because they both do something pretty different. Uh, if you're looking just for something strong to use in teams, you probably want a Weaver. It's really good for Guild Wars. Uh, both offensively and defensively though of course you can only use it once on defense however you can use it for three different guild war days so it's kind of like a wild queen in that regard and that's really good to pick up for guild wars also if it happens to be available next week uh, guild wars next week as well so that would be even more synergy there but um i'd probably say arachnid weaver uh Phoenicia, of course really good for a lot of farming related stuff um and i use her pretty much almost every single day if not every single day just to clear out dailies and stuff like that which reminds me i still haven't cleared the deeds yet i should probably do that before uh I don't end up claiming an Imperial. That would be quite horrible. To forget to that. There we go. Okay, uh, let me go claim the uh, adventure board. Because I definitely do want to make sure to clear these out. Also, uh, Puzzle Quest 3 actually added something kind of similar to this system. Which is kind of funny. Their other game that they're working on. Where on earth is my Phoenicia these days? The reason I mention that is uh, recently I've been skipping the not useful tasks in Gems of War. And I've been doing the exact same thing in the other game because, gosh, is it time-consuming to do it in the other game. They basically doubled the amount of time it takes to do all dailies. Well, not exactly doubled, but um, it was definitely an increase compared to what it was before. I think before you could really easily get it done in like 20-30 minutes. Now it's like an hour <laughs> to do it all. So pretty much doubled, not tripled. But they're still constantly changing things, so... Like, that's even higher than Gems of War's dailies. Like, if you just take standard, which is basically adventure board, uh, dungeons, and then do your three delves, that comes out to about uh, 35 minutes or so. If you add arena on that, it does get to an hour, but most people don't bother doing arena. Arena set up in a way where it's super optional. And of course, I don't do the delve uh, daily. Uh, the main reason we don't do the delve lit daily is, um, well, two reasons. One of them is pretty recent, though um, 
the reason we haven't, uh, for the most part in the past, is just because we already had so many Chaos Shards. And the new reason why is we have so many Chaos Shards. <laughs> because um, the main difference is before we already had a lot because we were running... Um, we were running uh, level 500 for all the factions from the event, so we were getting a lot via gems. However, uh, the reason we most recently have uh, way more than we could ever know what to do with is because of Noma Palooza. <laughs> because uh, one of the gnomes is a daemon gnome, and it drops chaos shards. And now we have like 100,000 chaos shards. <laughs> which, um, yeah, there's really little point in doing the daily uh, delves now. Because or, uh, one of the main reasons... Oh, assuming you haven't gotten everything to level 500. If you haven't done level 500 pure faction, you would still do it, which is a good majority of people, obviously. But uh, assuming you've already gotten them all maxed, um, there's very little need to run them now if you have specifically gotten them all 500 maxed. Um, because, yeah, the main loot that you would get uniquely within these uh, chests are, there's basically three of them. Uh, legendary ingots, but um, you don't generally need them because you get so many already. Mythic ingots, but you don't need them because you get so many already. And chaos shards. And well, guess what? You don't need them because you get so many already, particularly from um, the um, Noma Pluses now. So there is very little need to do daily delves unless you're specifically progressing them upwards. Which, uh, of course, we don't need to do. We have max 75,000. And this Friday, we'll have max um, 77,500. Which is unfortunate because that is 500 off from plus one attack. So we're not going to have that until two factions from now. Not uh, next Friday's faction, but uh, the following one. Also, we're going to get uh, 77 random ingots per day. We're sorry, not 77, 57. We're sorry, 58 once we get that extra one. Not like those will really do much. We have so many useless ingots. What was even the point of these things? They brought so many into the game. As those as well. They're like just as bad as trade stones. Like how ridiculously high. Look at these. No also, uh, look at how broken legendary and mythic ingots are. We have, uh, well, mythic's still the lowest. Oh, no, actually, uh, we have more mythic ingots than rares. How? And we have, um, these numbers are so weird. Like, who thought of this drop table for ingots? <laughs> this is the long-term effect of the uh, ingot economy from, um, since we haven't needed to max anything. Um, obviously, the commons are the most common. But then rares are the rarest. Well, I guess it is rare after all. But uh, rares are uh, 5,053. Then ultra rare just spikes up to like 60, uh, 16,788. So apparently ultra rare isn't as rare as rare. Uh, epics um, have always had an issue in the past of being really low. However, they've done a lot in the f uh, recently. Uh, and over time, this is actually probably going to scale to be, uh, oddly enough, uh, higher than ultra rares at some point. Uh, legendaries are so high, of course, because of uh, as well as mythics because of... Um, the factions and um yeah these numbers are so weird <laughs> like they they're just all over the place as far as where our numbers are also we of course we don't get enough forge scrolls in the game we also don't get enough imperials and deeds like this is the main category they really need to fix because a lot of end game is uh, associated here as far as getting uh kingdom upgrades and all that and these resources come in at a glacial glacial pace Relative to how many are needed to max everything. Like, I understand that they want that system to last for, like, years upon years upon years. But, uh, they come in super duper ridiculously ultra slow. Oh, did I finish all my deeds? I'm pretty sure I did. Let me double check. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> and I would not want to forget the Imperial, that's for sure. They are too precious, as we just mentioned. Uh, because all the kingdom upgrades, of course, require it. Oh, so I haven't had a code yet. Let me go do that after, uh, we clear out dungeons. Go hand out a nice shiny code. Also, no bit midday stream tomorrow, by the way. Nor on Monday. We've been doing a lot of them recently. But, uh, won't be the next two days. Got quite a few things I need to do. That I've been putting off, mostly because Pokemon Unite. Kind of got in the way of them a bit. Okay, uh, we did that, we did that, we did that. Uh, that is all the things. Let's go do the code. And uh, then we'll just probably do a little bit more token grinding. If I can get there. Code section. There it is. Redeem code. Cut it. Save it. Zoom it out. Put it right over there. Uh, there it is. Uh, 
get the link so you guys can get there directly. And here goes go. Here's the redeem code. Use on jumpsaware.com for the game code section. Your invite code can be found underneath your settings menu. Uh, your um, whatever your game says right over there. Redeem code's right over there in chat. Starting with the letters A, B, C. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, and it gives the um, uh, same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. And definitely feel free to leave a like on the stream. Help us out a lot. And it's greatly appreciated. Right there it goes go. Nice shiny gem key to go with those treasure maps that everyone's going to use, right? Let's see, how many are we up to? 25,390. <laughs> Though our Volky stack isn't uh, looking too much different these days. <laughs> Could you imagine for a second if we had 25,000? If um, this number over here, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. But imagine if this number uh, was for this number and we had 25,390 Volkies. That would be absolutely insane. <laughs> Though, uh, every Vault event now, um, you can almost do that. It is possible to actually get 1,000 Volkies every Vault event for every Vault event for the rest of time in the current balance of the game, assuming it does not get rebalanced. Um, you would have to grind a lot longer than you would have had to for the previous one, though. Uh, having to grind likely close to 60 hours, which obviously most people won't do. That's a lot of time. <laughs> that would give you literally like four hours of sleep every day and nothing else to do the entire time. Uh, however, it is theoretically possible to hit um, over a thousand again. Uh, as you may, might not take that much time, but um, it, it will take a pretty similar amount of time, maybe 16 hours each day. Uh, obviously, I would not be grinding that long. However, uh, we will probably aim for like a 300 target or a 500 target or something like that. I don't, know, I don't know. It might even be lower than that as far as how many you need. Like with 12 hours, you might actually even be able to hit a thousand or, you know, 12 hours each day. I'm not sure. We'll find out uh, because this will be the first vault event where we. Uh, have to actually participate it with how they intended for the most part because obviously last time we were able to uh, get quite a bit off that thursday and basically just run no Mapuza the entire time however the way that the event normally goes is you have to go for about an hour and just try to find the scrolls and then you can end up using the scroll or two if you get like it doubles the set but uh it's going to be like a little bit of normal uh gnome grinding and then switching into being able to go and um actually do the normal palooza it's not just going to be straight normal paloozas the entire time which obviously is ridiculously broken loot <laughs> also uh make sure not to open vault keys during those vault events anymore either it is much better value to try to find a normal palooza gnomes and just open the vault keys when it's not the vault event like we've been doing all this week um but yeah anyways uh let's go back to uh farming some tokens and get several more runs in we got two anders so far to stream no nisha though but we did get a nisha a couple weeks ago so we we're not too dry at the moment Especially since we haven't even been farming them that much. As of lately. Oh, I'm using the wrong team, aren't I? As soon as I heard the audio cue, it's like, oh wait, I'm not using the wrong team. <laughs> that is the wrong audio cue for the game mode we're playing. Because we would never hear that sound ever. While doing this, if we were actually using that, uh, this team. Because no enemy nor ourself has that sound in this kingdom. There's actually quite a few audio cues in this game. Even though a lot of people play without sound. Or at least without music, if nothing else. Though there's actually a direct audio cue for music uh, in the Noma Palooza. Because it has its own music track. So the second it plays the normal victory sound, or it does, um, you know, back to the normal music when you're in the other screen, you know um, the Noma Palooza has ended, even though you're not on the screen that shows it has ended. Even if you were just in a battle that had four, you can actually already know before you go into your next battle if it's still a Noma Palooza or not, due to the audio cue of the music. Oh, I did do that. I was like, ah, oh, I don't one-shot him. It's like, nope. <laughs> I don't have hero anymore. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, it worked out, actually. It worked out in the end.
Hello, Bushka. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully, get at least one more good token this stream. So overall, we're doing pretty decent this stream. Plus, I just noticed, why is my one chat so far behind the other one? I'm not sure how it is on the YouTube live version right now. But, um... We actually have two different ones that aren't... But both the chats that I'm looking at aren't actually that one. But, um... For whatever reason, it, it keeps changing. Sometimes the one I'm looking at on my YouTube one is quicker. And sometimes the one on my program is quicker. However, right now, the one on my program is, like, way quicker. Like, the second it happens, it's uh, showing up. Whereas on the other computer, it's taking, like, a five-second delay. It's so weird. And if I had the live version up, I'm pretty sure that would also have a different timing than the other two. And I'm not talking about the one above me right now. I'm talking about the one um, that's in my interface. Because it's uh, updating, like, literally instantly. Uh, what banner and medals um, do you do with this team? Um, I do 20% mana start into 8 magic. Uh, the reason for 8 magic might seem a little bit weird with a skull farming team. Uh, however, I currently have enough skull damage that we one-shot. If you don't have enough skull damage to one-shot, you'd want to have attack medals, uh, like uh, Medal of Seasons, and have two seasons set with 20% mana start. However, I run with... Um, Eight magic, and the reason for this is Rao, so we get more mana accumulation. We already have enough attack value that we are already killing them uh, without having higher attack, so there isn't any need to have higher attack. So we go magic instead so that Rao can get more destroys, and for no reason other than that. Well, theor theoretically, Flame of also gets more damage, however, that will almost never be relevant. It's uh, almost entirely, actually, if not entirely, just to have Rao do um, eight more gem destroys. I mean, that's quite a bit of a difference, being able to destroy 50 gems instead of uh, 48. Um, makes quite a margin of difference. But yeah, next week we have Guild Wars. Should be interesting to see. Uh, it's also the last Guild Wars that we have to deal with Lankathropy. Also, the second uh, Guild Wars we have to deal with Lincothropy. Or at least in the sense that uh, Lincothropy naturally falling from the sky. Because here, Forfeit will no longer fall from the, from the sky unless there's a Hollow Storm. And by here, Forfeit, I mean in nine days from now. But this will be the last one that we still have to deal with it on. It'll be nice to never see it again. Unless someone specifically uses a troop. Too bad you can't downvote a team. Like you can kind of upvote it by like, uh, like when you after you fight a team, there's like a thing that you can do, and that helps with the uh, renown thingy or you know your um, reputation thing. But there's not like a downwards option for it. Like this team is awful. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because hopefully a lot of people will deliberately not use Lincolnthropy on defense going forward, so we never have to see the mechanic ever again. Or almost never again. It'll still be on Essence of Evil and a couple other things like that. As well as other random stats effects. Also, there's a chance that the Mythic that we got this week will be meta in some teams. Of course, we covered a video on it um, this Tuesday, actually. I ended up covering a video on it. I never did uh, check because I was busy with um, the other game. I never did check to see uh, the comment section on uh, that video. <laughs> I almost kind of forgot. Were there any questions on it? It seems like forever ago at this point. This week has gone on very slowly, but in a good way. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. That's not a question. Da -da -da. That's... Is that a question? Have any good synergy with other Lincothropy troops like uh, Ristag and Raven? Nope. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. That's not a question. Da, da, da. That's not a question. Okay. Yeah, I almost forgot to check the comment section on that video. And by almost forget, I mean I forgot. Do I work at an auction house because I sure talk fast? 
Uh, yeah, I do talk at a relatively quick pace. Just the rate at which I normally talk normally. But yeah, I do definitely do talk at an above average pace, that's for sure. And what's kind of weird is when I'm tired, I talk even quicker, not slower, normally. You can kind of tell in the Monday videos on that, because normally I stay up to record them at 3 a.m., having not slept prior. Not always, though, but more often than not, they record that. Um, well, by the time I'm actually recording, it's almost 5 a.m. normally, or 4 a.m., and then it gets up by about 6 a.m. or so. The video, not me sleeping. <laughs> and then I sleep, and I get around to everything else I need to do during the day. It's also why the video normally is a little bit later if I um, don't get it done at that time. Because I normally do all that other stuff before the video. If I happen to crash and then wake up randomly <laughs> at like noon or something. And then I do the video once everything else is done. But lately I've been pretty consistently getting it out on the night of. Yeah, people in New Jersey do talk a bit quicker. It's one of those areas where people... Uh, it's one of those areas in the United States where um, everyone just talks at a slightly quicker speed. You don't even notice it while you're living there. But for someone like coming from the outside, it, they might kind of notice it. Like, I just feel like everyone in South Carolina talks slow. But just because everyone in New Jersey talks quick. <laughs> Not everyone, everyone, but uh, like the natural pacing of how you talk is a lot quicker in that state on average. Where people say water weirdly. It's not weird. That's exactly how you say water. Oh, hello, Jonathan. Welcome. Why does every move look awful? <laughs> I'll just take the recommended one. If in, if in doubt, just take the flashy thing. Yes, water. Uh, thank you, Major. Oh, yeah, uh, this is uh, a really relaxing game. Honestly, I find Fall Guys pretty relaxing, too. But, yeah, uh, Gems of War has been out for um, seven years now. They're almost at their seven-year anniversary, actually. It will be in a couple months. Yeah, this game's been going for a while. It's just a free-to-play match three. This is the first match three game I ever got into. But it, it's a pretty interesting genre. Unfortunately, a lot of more recent ones um, have gotten really, like, free-to-play monetization heavy. But some of the classics, like Puzzle Quest 1, were, like, really, really solid games. This is 2, but, of course, a lot of more recent ones, like, every single um, Match 3 game these days is uh, really heavily monetized. Uh, one thing I really love about this game is how quickly paced it is. It's actually one of the reasons I like Pokemon Unite so much, too. It's a uh, really quick-paced, straight-to-the-point kind of gameplay. And there's some really fun, um, just kind of, um, gimmicks as far as, like, what you can end up doing for, uh, quickly winning. Because the average match in this game is probably, like, a minute. But depending on your game mode, it can vary. 
like the one we're doing now is like 30 seconds. Some game modes can go as quick as like 10 seconds. Others can take minutes. Like Guild Wars, we're going to be taking like probably two or three minutes per battle. Because you have to think it out a lot more since you have a really limited amount of battles. So I still wish this game would get an 8x speed. It's never going to happen. If nothing else, we need to at least convince them to add a speed option to Puzzle Quest 3. <laughs> the other game that they're doing. Because um, it needs it desperately. <laughs> they said it's currently not on the table. But they will consider it. Because it was never planned for uh, Gems of War either. And then they added a 2 times speed and a 4 times speed. So uh, it's not impossible. They're never going to have a higher speed to Gems of War, though. They'd be too concerned on how on earth they would balance it. I also feel like the servers wouldn't be able to keep up. They could barely keep up with 4 times speed when you're doing the 10 second battles. I wouldn't be surprised how bad it would be when uh, you would have 8 times speed. The gems would pretty much just teleport into place. <laughs> hey, we got a Volk! We actually got a Volky! <laughs> we actually got a Volky off of a non uh, Volt Event Gnome. That's the second one in a week, too. We got really lucky on that. We did that on Tuesday this week, I think. Tuesday night? I can't remember today. The days are all meshing together. But uh, that's pretty lucky. Obviously, we get like a billion of those during Vault events now. However, it's still pretty cool seeing when it's not a Vault event. Uh, they do still drop. They just have a lot lower chance. Uh, one other thing that still drops, too, is uh, Nomapalooza Gnomes. It is still possible to find it, even when it's not a uh, Vault event. Um, they're just really ridiculously rare, of course. But they are still actually around. However, I have yet to actually see one when it's not a Vault event. Though it is definitely possible. There have been instances of it. <gasps> hey, a third Anu! Hey, we're doing pretty good on Anus today. Three Anus. Though, zero Nishas. I really wish there were more ways to get Anus or Nishas, though. They're kind of like the whole um, deed issue in this game, where um, the rate of them is just a little too slow. Relative to the sheer amount that you need. Well, if nothing else, at least they're infinitely farmable. A lot of free-to-play games make it so it's really limited how many things you can really get in that regard. And this one still does for a lot of resources too, obviously. But um, it does it pretty minimally for most resources. Especially now that Nomapaloozas can farm so many things. Like, there's not even a limit on how many orbs you can get now, really. Because um, you do one Nomapalooza and boom, you just got like infinite bulky. <laughs> or seemingly infinite. And then you just kind of go crazy with um, how many orbs you get. Was quite a few other resources. It's also nice they don't have a split premium currency in this game, which is becoming increasingly more popular in free to play games, where it is like a currency because, uh, in order to control the economy, they basically make a premium currency that cannot be earned uh, by any other means uh, other than money. Well, luckily, Gems Award does not have equivalents of that. Puzzle Quest 3 does. But uh, they didn't do it for Gems of War, luckily, and likely never will at this point. It's kind of too late for them to do so. Not really something they can squeeze in. It's all Joe's fault on Puzzle Quest 3. Add more and more animations. I know, right? Uh, it's actually kind of funny. Because, uh, because he animated everything to be unique and dynamic. Like, it looks really cool for Puzzle Quest 3. Like, how the, all the animations are for the game. However, um, there's actually a meta game around the weapons because um, some of their bonuses aren't really too good. But uh, though they did make weapons a lot better in the most recent patch. However, um, there's actually a different attack speed length as far as the different weapons. And there are some weapons that per attack are about two seconds quicker than other weapons, which over the course of a battle can save like 10 to 30 seconds, which is pretty funny. Because some animations were made longer than others. Because obviously the animation was just to make sure they were, um... They were all similarly lengths, but not all exactly the same. And they were all made unique just to, you know, look more dynamic. And actually look like they're using the weapon, of course, and everything. And they have every single one be specifically distinct. But in doing so, they have uh, quite a few of them that uh, are shorter or longer than others. 
because they didn't uniformly make every single animation exactly like two seconds or something. Like some are one second, some are three, some are almost four. Which I'm not sure any of them go to four, but <laughs> it's some kind of span of about two seconds. Where the quickest one's about a second, the longest about three seconds or so. Of course in Gems of War you don't need to worry about that. Because the attack animation is literally the troop moves and hits the other thing's card. So you don't have to worry about such a thing. Alright, let's go for one more chest. But yeah, the animator that they hired for uh, Puzzle Quest 3 is actually pretty good. They were previewing some other animation stuff that they were doing for the game too, and it, it actually looked really solid. Like, I was actually pretty impressed <laughs> by, um, like, if they're going to keep adding units that are that dynamic. I personally hated the art style at first, and overall, I still I'm not a huge fan of the direction it is. But um, I don't know; it, it looks like it has promising, promising going into the future. I feel like they need to hire a different concept artist, though. Like their animator's really good, but some of the concept art and some of the stuff that they put in design-wise just looks kind of generic. And they, re I really feel like they should hire someone else for that, and whoever they're using now. They definitely hired a correct animator, though. That's for sure. These are pretty solid. Because, of course, uh, even though the game doesn't have, like... Um, well, it does have some 2D assets, quite a few. But, you know, it's a lot of 3D assets. Um, they still have concept art for all of the 3D stuff before it actually gets made. And whoever does the 3D or the 2D stuff kind of determines pretty much what it's going to look like. Since it's kind of like the base for the 3D as far as what it's referenced from. Oh, let's see. I don't think that's the right. There's just some really questionable designs design-wise for it. In Gems of War, it's not really as big a deal because there's just such a sheer amount. That it, uh, I don't know, I'll, most true part in Gems of War actually seems pretty solid though. But in a game like that, it matters a lot more. Especially because of the sheer, or the way, way lower amount of units overall. Like, I'm pretty sure it's under 100. Probably even less than that. But then again, kind of what Gems of War started with. However, they're likely not to increase that number too, too much. Like, obviously, it's getting higher. But, uh, it's not gonna get, like, super, super high. Like, no way is it ever gonna be a thousand, obviously. Because it's way harder to make a 3D model and rig it and everything than it is to uh, do a little 2D little image. Though that actually begs the question, does anyone know? I'm kind of curious because it's another kind of 3D game that's like massive. Though obviously nothing as massive as they've ever done. <gasps> Anisha! Speaking of massive, we found Anisha. But does anyone know how many units are in uh, Raid Shadow Legends? I'm actually curious. Because Raid Shadow Legends has been around for... I have a tree, though. We know that info. Let me double check. I'm kind of curious what that number is. I want to say they have... 200-something units. Because they need 200-something 3D models. So I want to say the number's around there. Maybe I'm way off. I'm not even sure what number to guess. Oh, uh, let's see. I want to go check now. Oh, uh, let's see. When did it release and how many units does it have? <laughs> I just want to check it compared to Gems of War. Uh, da, 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 da. Raid Shadow Legends. Also, we're never playing that game. <laughs> well, we played it for one on a variety stream just for the joke of it. But we would never actually get into that game. I hate energy systems so, so much. Or at least when it's done like that. Like, energy systems can be used in a way that isn't, like, super annoying. Like, I don't feel like, um, the way that, uh, Pokemon Unite did it was, like, ultra annoying. Because it doesn't take away from the core experience of the game. It's just basically for some loot boxes. Uh, it came out in 2018. How many units does it have, though? Uh, Raid Shadow uh, Legends. Number of units? Or troops? I'm not even sure what they're called in that game. They're called Legends? 
No, they're called uh, Champion Overview. Oh, how many champions? Number of champions? 300. Okay, that was a quick answer. So how long ago was that article? Oh, well, I'm just going with that number. 300 is how many they have. <laughs> and they need a 3D model for every single one, obviously, because of how the game is. Right, that answers that question. So yeah, that was about how close I, I guess. I guess 250. But they have 300. That makes sense. But yeah, 3D models obviously take way, way, way longer to make. At least relative to a 2D image. But anyways, guys. Uh, I'm going to be heading out for now. Uh, we will be back. Uh, unless there's any other questions any of you want to uh, want me to go over. Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow night at uh, same time as always. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. One hour prior to now tomorrow. Uh, we'll be going over all the weekly spoilers and uh, finishing up anything else for the week. Though I think we kind of already messed with it all. So I might just do a little bit of token grinding. And uh, we'll definitely make sure to get that level, that's for sure. And we'll go from there. And, uh, of course, don't forget to finish out Invasions if you haven't already. Uh, we didn't poke it tonight because we were already done with it. But uh, uh, there is a weapon there for only 210 gems. Highly advised getting. And uh, that will also give you enough sigils to help your guild go get the uh, uh, entirety of the event then. If they don't already have it done uh, already. And uh, if you want to, you can even make a leaderboard, though not really that useful to do that. But definitely make sure to get to 210 gems for the weapon. And um, finish that out. And of course, we got Guild Wars going on next week. And uh, as well as the last week of the campaign. Uh, if you bought the normal pass, you will be able to get the new Mythic. We already covered the video for it, but we'll probably re-mention more stuff uh, tomorrow. Or sorry, Sunday night. I mean, um, not Sunday, Monday night. <laughs> because that will be the day that a lot of people are getting the new troop. I don't know, maybe we'll go over on Sunday a little bit too. Uh, since um, several hours later, anyone who got the normal pass will also be getting this. If you do the tasks pretty much immediately when it launches. Though, of course, we'll be doing all that Monday night. Finishing out the tasks, probably going over the Mythic a little bit again, and going from there. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you later. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everyone.